three, two, and one. It's the KSO Show. I'm Derek Young, joined by Grant Flanders, and we're taking some different angles this this year, I guess, starting with the first game week of just how to approach each game from a preview basis, where we'll actually probably do multiple versions of a preview, but we'll get to the picks, and you'll likely hear those on Friday, but each Tuesday this this week, you're probably getting it, well, each Monday this week, you're mm-hmm. getting it on Tuesday. Uh, we'll we'll take, talk about the big picture of a game, what it matters, why it's critical, the importance of it, or how we should weigh it. And obviously the first game of the year for the Kansas State Wildcats, neutral side venue, Stanford. Yep. Uh, just that part of it, being the All-State kickoff classic, playing at the home of the Dallas Cowboys in AT&T Stadium in Arlington, does that add a little bit of juice to this game? It, it absolutely does. Um you know, it, it'll be interesting to see if they win it. K State and Climbing will be, uh, you know, wanting to do it again. It sounds like if they're successful down there and they have a good game, but it absolutely brings more juice. Um, just playing in Jerry World, playing in Dallas, the lights are brighter than they would be in Manhattan. There's going to be more national attention. Uh, playing a team like Stanford that already brings more national attention, but you throw in a neutral site in Texas and one of the you know most well-known football stadiums in all of the country in Jerry World, then you're going to have more lights, more br- brights, and just eyes on your product, and that's what K State wants. That's why they did this. Um, you know they played in Palo Alto a few years ago. They could have played this one in Manhattan. They chose not to because they knew this is going to have more umph behind it from a, a product standpoint, from a team standpoint. This really elevates everything from. Um, as for every, the only th- downside you could use for it is recruiting base. But as far as everything team wise, it goes. This game is going to be electric. Yeah, well, the time and TV slot probably diminishes it a little bit. Stanford maybe brings a little bit more exposure to a game just being a Power Five opponent um, from the Pac-12. Obviously, although the Pac-12 has kind of lost its luster a bit mm-hmm. as well. How diminished is it? too that it might not be well attended just because Stanford doesn't bring a whole lot of crowd kids they don't have enough crowd there maybe yeah. 20 25,000 fans but we're talking about a stadium that's pretty big and this place might not be half full that wouldn't be as cool to see um like one of those bowl games that not many people care about and you see just half Zero. the stadium filled um that wouldn't be as cool to see you'd rather see half purple half red and white and stuff and and a really electric atmosphere. But, yeah, like you said, K-State, you can expect to come out. They will be out there, but, I mean, they'll only eat up so many tickets. Stanford will eat up some tickets, and then there will be tickets left behind, you would think. Maybe not. Maybe some people in Texas will come out and, and want to see a neutral game or some, you know, people that are just college football fans. Um, but that would be a little interesting because, yeah, we've been inside that stadium, um, you know, on the field and looked around, and it, it looks huge when it's empty just ginormous and I'm sure it looks huge when it's filled with fans too but it would add it would diminish um, some of the returns of how the excitement would feel if the if the crowd isn't as electric as it could be with a filled up stadium well that'll probably happen it, it, athletic director Gene Taylor has already said this week that they'll be lucky if there's 30,000 fans there which that's going to be unfortunate but it'll still be an exciting game we hope yep. hopefully maybe a Kansas State win at the end of the day <laughs> as well in terms of where it falls on the schedule what's behind Stanford that makes this game kind of critical from that standpoint the this is as tricky as the first six games that Kansas State has had since the inception of KSO if you don't take care of your work here you against Stanford you could be looking down the barrel of a mm-hmm. one and two season because although Stanford is the power five non-con opponent it's probably not the toughest non-con opponent because after Stanford yeah. two weeks later you get Nevada who may be a top 25 team at that point a much tougher opponent probably if you don't care take care of Stanford then you're vulnerable against Nevada you could be entering conference play at one and two and that puts a little bit more emphasis on getting what still even Vegas thinks should be um, uh, should be a win for K-State. Whereas the Stanford program might bring some luster to it as far as the name goes and the camaraderie, the program has not been great the last few seasons, and this season in particular, uh, going into it preseason-wise, is only, you know, Vegas has the over-under at three and a half games, which doesn't bode well for what the media and what, you know, Vegas thinks, the betting, you know, odds makers thinks that this team is going to be, meaning... 
Yes, and K State has to win this. They they can't not win this game and then and then be super excited for the rest of the season. At least fans won't be. Uh, it's just it would ch- it would tilt things a lot until you start to see more victories come. But like you said, that would be, it's hard to think they can beat a team like even Nevada two weeks later if they can't beat a team like uh, Stanford. And if they can't do those either of those two things or be either of those two teams, how are they going to beat Oklahoma State the first weekend um, of Big Twelve play in Stillwater, and then the gauntlet after that? That would be a gauntlet every single game. If you can't take care of business against Stanford, yeah, that's the tricky part too. That you know I didn't even mention is your first three conference games are against perhaps the three yeah. toughest teams in the Big Twelve. So that doesn't bode well. You, you could go one and two in non-con. You could go one and five at that point. Mm-hmm. That makes it the first swing game of the season to be Stanford. If you want a bowl, you probably have to beat Stanford. Yeah. If you want a special season, then you probably have to beat Nevada. And I'm talking about special being in the nine or ten win range. Mm-hmm. So this non-conference uh, this year is probably a little bit more critical to the Wildcats than maybe in years past just because of the way it situates, it situates itself yeah. on the schedule. There's kind of two games you have, you have to be concerned about instead of just one. And then when you think that the first part of your Big 12 schedule is a lot tougher than the latter part, which I believe is probably kind of customary, but usually you don't have the gauntlet to open up that is Oklahoma State, Oklahoma yeah. And Iowa State. Oklahoma and Iowa State both predicted to make the Big 12 championship game. Oklahoma State is a team that's often had your number. Um, K-State yeah. did win there uh, in Stillwater in 2017, did not in 2019. So this will be almost kind of the, the rubber match, so to speak, for, for Skylar Thompson. Uh, I'm not sure he played in 2019. As a, or, yeah, he would have because that was Chris Kleiman's mm-hmm. first season. So he was the starting quarterback that lost that game. So he's one one to rubber match for him. Um Man, that that yeah. it, it's a must win. I you you called it a must win. I hadn't done so until now. I agreed to write on that. So if we're talking about big picture here, um, it doesn't get much more critical than yeah. that out of the gate. That's it's kind of weird way to look at. The it. last thing I would add is there's also hasn't been more hype for K State going into a season. Um, the last few seasons, obviously, I mean, first year was Kleiman's first season three years ago. And that happened uh, to where he had a successful season, probably better than people thought he would have. Second year, COVID really um, dampered everyone's mood and just didn't have that type of luster. And even dating back to um, some of uh, Bill Snyder's last few seasons, there wasn't quite luster going into a season like there is this season, I would say. There might have been in 2017, um, because Jesse Ertz was still the quarterback at the time. Mm -hmm. 2018, certainly not. 2019, there wasn't with Klein in there. I yeah. think I think that people were hoping for six and six, seven and five. They went eight and four. Mm-hmm. I think folks would take eight and four Absolutely. this year. I probably would. I have predicted nine and three. The um, and you'll probably hear that on a different podcast. So I just kind of spoiler alert there. Um, he's Grant Flanders. I'm Derek Young. We'll have different angles that we take the rest of the week on just how we approach and discuss the Kansas State Stanford matchup that you'll see on Saturday in Arlington. If you're taking the, if you're going on the trip down Arlington, say hi. We'll be there. We'll Absolutely. be out and about as well. It is so. Um, and I guess that's one thing left to do. Tell your friends.